smile? Von Bebant, womanizer, befriender of Nazis. It doesn't sound like someone who would risk everything to save the lives of more than 1,100 Jews. Yet Oskar Schindler did exactly that. For Schindler's List, director Steven Spielberg traveled to Poland to film this remarkable true story. Where I was standing, being a Jew 50 years ago, was a death sentence, an automatic death sentence. Rina? Good morning. And thank you so very much to RM Green and to the college for inviting me here and to be able to share my experiences with you. If it wasn't for Oscar Schindler, I would not be here. I would not have been able to get married. I would not have been able to have children. I would not have been able to have grandchildren. Because of Oscar Schindler, we have descendants and because of Oscar Schindler, we are able to be witnesses. We are this link, the only living link between this horrible, horrible blackness, the darkness that happened. And now especially, where there is so many deniers of the Holocaust, it is so important for us, those of us who can talk about it, many survivors cannot. And also, because years ago, people really didn't want to listen. And so, it, we, those of us who are here, we feel it is our duty, not just for ourselves, but for us to speak about those who cannot talk. For my cousins, my aunts, my uncles, my father, my grandparents, all those who perished, we are the living witnesses. And just the way you saw it in a movie, the ghetto was part of the old part of Krakow. It was in the middle of a very bustling community. We had to build a brick wall all around the two streets long and two avenues wide. There were about 40,000 Jews living in Poland before the war. And in the very first few months of the German occupation, about 15,000 were evacuated, they were sent away. Elderly people were taken away, young children were taken away, families were separated. No matter how much people begged, and how much people cried, and how much people asked for mercy, there was none coming from any of the Nazis. There was always also the problem with the bystander. There was always the problem of the indifferent of our neighbors. Our neighbors, who when um, our businesses were taken away, did not ask where the people were going. When the Jewish children could not come to school and hundreds of desks were empty, our neighbors did not ask where we went. And when the time came and we had to left our, leave our homes and walk to the ghetto, Again, our neighbors did not ask where we were going. Everybody was silent. We felt abandoned. We, didn't, we knew nobody cared. We knew that there was no place that we could get help from. And to Oskar Schindler, we were people. Unlike to the Nazis, to whom we were not allowed to live because we were a subhuman race. To the Nazis, we were pieces. And when the Nazis discussed the final solution of the Jews at the Wannsee Conference, they were talking about how many pieces can they send in a train in one day? And how many pieces will the gas chamber kill in one hour? And how many pieces will the crematorium burn in an hour? But for Oskar Schindler, we were people. He liked us. He wanted to help us. He tried to feed those that worked for him better, and he tried to see that those people that worked for him were dressed better. And of course, in order to do all that, he had to become very friendly with Amon Get, because it was Amon Get who was in charge of the plush of camp to which we had to go after the ghetto. Oskar Schindler was arrested twice. Thank God he had such high contacts that he was released each time. 
because in Brinitz, Oskar Schindler was using his own money and his own resources. Mrs. Schindler came to live with him in Brinitz. The power of Oskar Schindler, the power of one person, cannot be dismissed. Oskar Schindler, of course, has been honored by the state of Israel, and especially now all over the world, so he certainly was not honored by Germany. He is most considered a traitor by his, by, by his neighbors. By us, of course, for us, he was our hero. We worshipped him. You know, Adolf Hitler wanted to have an Aryan race. Everybody blonde and blue eye. But of course, all of you who've seen pictures of Adolf Hitler, you know we had black hair and black eye. And so our children, just like the rest of the world, we were all colored. And you know, Germany was supposed to be one of the most cultured countries in the world with its oldest universities, best education, its people famous, for the composers and musicians and pianists and poets and writers. Yet all those educated people, all the famous judges who allowed Adolf Hitler to change the constitution and the law so he could persecute the Jews, that he could take away all the civil rights of innocent people, all those people became cold-blooded murderers. They absolutely killed without remorse, and there is no remorse shown from any of the Nazis to this day. It gives me such hope to talk to somebody like you, to a group like you, that will go into the world, come across the deniers of the Holocaust, and be able to speak up for me and those of us who are around. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I was watching, I was admiring her. I saw what a beautiful lady was sitting oh, in the and I'm very happy to Watch. meet you. Yes. Thank you very much. It's very may, kind may of you to say that. Good health thank and a long you. life in thank your family. You. Thank you so nice much. You too. Thank you. I think it makes me think a lot more about how I treat people and how I look at the people around me, um, about stereotyping and just um, about prejudice in your everyday life. I think if you remember the small things, then you can stop the big things from happening. You look around the room and you see the tears in people's eyes and you know they've been affected and that they're seeing history in a whole different light. I hope to accomplish two things. I hope to show people that one person can make a difference, that you don't have to follow the bully and do the, the wrong thing. You have to stand up. And another thing is for the deniers of the Holocaust. Uh, I want people to meet more survivors and to believe those who were there rather than those who would like people to think that they are, you know, preaching the truth while they are really preaching lies and hate. Will your children continue to witness when uh, you're gone? I hope so. Mm -hmm.